Killing is forgiving, or is forgiving killing? In 2014, I was an adjunct faculty in one of the renowned universities here in Dubai. When Jay walked in on the first day of the semester, Jay was not like any other student I've met in my entire professional career. Jay was a woman dressed as a man. As she walked into the classroom to find a seat, many thoughts went through my head. And the one voice that spoke to me said, all you can do is give her her fair share of treatment and knowledge. By the end of the semester, Jay wowed me personally. She never skipped a class. She had every assignment on time. And she aced the course. But above all, she had great human ethics and values. Being the curious soul that I am, I actually called Jay to my office and asked her why. And she said, well, it's hormonal. Second, she said, I was abandoned by my father. And later on, as I grew older and my personality began to clear up, my mother left me as well. I have a lot of friends. I'm loved, very confident, yet I live alone. In 2015, a year later, I met T. T, on the first day of the semester, walked up to me and actually said, this is the only sentence you will be hearing me speak this whole semester. I am not interested in a participation grade. All I want is for you never to ask me a question in front of my peers. All I could do was respect her wish and ask her to find a seat. A month into the semester, I asked her colleagues, what's up with T? And they said, well, T's been here for three years, but she hasn't uttered a word with anybody. In fact, another one said, T is a snob. Again, I called T to my office and asked her what's going on. She said, I come from a good family. We communicate very well at home. However, I was bullied my entire school career. And in high school, I decided to isolate myself from everyone else. That carried over to university years. In university, I thought of suicide three times. Twice were just mere thoughts. But the one time, the window refused to open. At that point, I had to take a step back and ask myself questions. Why are we as a society so superficial? Why do we tend to take things at face value? We make assumptions, we form judgments, and we aren't so tolerant of each other. Even the word tolerate, you may agree, implies that there is something unacceptable about this being. And it also assumes that I'm forced to acknowledge something that is out of the ordinary. It's almost like having a type of food. If I like it, then I'll have it and I'll always come back to it. But if I despise it, I'll acknowledge that it's there, but I will never come near it. Even a mere Google search of the word tolerance. And this is what popped up. Look at the second sentence. An example of tolerance is Muslims, Christians, and atheists being friends. Doesn't that imply that they aren't? It also suggests that there is a conflict until this very day. But when have we changed to become so intolerant? I remember that we've been always patient, understanding, accepting of others. In fact, tolerance is an innate feature instilled in us human beings since Adam and Eve. However, the need for tolerance, as I dug deeper, changed from being a behavior to actually becoming a movement 
in the 18th and 19th century with the rise of the two ideologies, extremism and populism. And for those who don't know what they mean, extremism is having extreme political and religious views, and populism is actually believing that the word of the people is what counts, and whatever the elites and the, the elites say is just corrupt. So, as I dug deeper, even in 2018, fast forward to last year, the Equal Opportunity Employee Commission in the United States conducted a survey to over 100,000 employees to ask them if they were discriminated against. And many answered. They boiled down all the answers to eight main types, but what was appalling is that it wasn't race or gender or religion that stood out as the highest discrimination type. In fact, it was discrimination by retaliation, i.e. human beings backstabbing each other. Now, I know it's a grim picture, and having said all that, as much as tolerance is an innate feature instilled in us beings, change is another innate feature instilled in us beings. Also, I come from a nation, the United Arab Emirates, where our sheikhs, our fathers, and our ancestors have given us hope. In 1966, the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan was appointed as ruler of Abu Dhabi, and he was chosen because he was a great listener, an effective negotiator and a tolerant soul. In 1968, he was able to sit down with the British military and convince them to withdraw out of the land. And in 1971, he signed a treaty of friendship with the British military to make sure that they separated and parted ways with light hearts. A month later, a nation was born and the same Sheikh Zayed was appointed as ruler of the United Arab Emirates. The sheikhs of today are no different and no other than their fathers. In fact, in 2015, the first federal law ending discrimination was issued, and in 2016, the first minister of tolerance was appointed. That very same year, The UAE National Tolerance Program, believe it or not, redefined the word tolerance with the United Nations. And in 2019, this year, it is the year of tolerance. In fact, 365 days to remind us of who we are as human beings. So, tolerance turns out to be the first pillar of being humans. It's the first type and first part to this journey to back to humanity. If you are tolerant in your actions and not in your thoughts, doesn't make you tolerant enough. In fact, you need to accept. You need to agree to disagree and accept that reality, but also accept that bettering yourselves rather than bettering others in an assumption that we're perfect. Next comes understand. Understand, put yourself in their shoes. Ask questions like why and how, but be careful. There's a fine line between minding your own business and actually caring. Finally, forgive. Forgive is the highest form and most purest form of tolerance. You forgive people not for who they are, but actually for their actions with respect and kindness. Isn't unity what all creatures on this earth aspire to? Because in unity, there is strength. I end my talk 
with a message on Tolerance Day by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. And he says that we see people equally as God has created us. We are only superior to each other by knowledge, adherence to the laws, and respecting this nation and other nations. Thank you.